we go. Do, 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 do. Hello everyone! Hi guys! Wow, my voice is actually sounding a little bit better. Um, it might, my voice might go in and out a bit. Um, I'm a little hoarse, but I hope that you guys are all having a really, really fantastic January. <coughs> Excuse me. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and tonight we are going to dye some yarn inspired by this fresh citrusy photo that I'm not sure where this pink lemon came from, but I want to play around with yellow with pops of pink. Some of the things that we do tonight might result in an orange, but I'm hoping that we can get some yellow and pink. Uh, that's what I'm going for. And so we're going to try a few different things and see how it goes. Now, this is a dialogue, so I'm inviting all of you to create your own version of something fiber arts related inspired by this picture um, that you see up here. It could be, you know, you could dye some yarn yourself, you could dye some roving, you could blend some fiber and spin it, um, or you could um, take some yarn uh, and create a color work knit or crochet project, weave something, you know, as long, tie dye a t-shirt, but let me know about your inspiration of the photo. You can share your pictures either on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialong, or there's also a link to a Facebook post um, in the video description. And if you reply with your picture on there, or you use the tag on Instagram, there's a chance I might feature your photo in the recap at the sometime at the beginning of February. So it's a lot of fun, and I really love seeing all the different ways that um, everyone is inspired by the photo. Huh. All right, so that's a lot of, um... <laughs> oh goodness, guys. Um, yeah, the, that's the, uh, all the important information, and we are about to get started. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other business. Um, No, I don't think I have any other announcement kind of things. Uh, today we are going to be using some commercial acid dyes. So all of the equipment that I'm using tonight is dedicated dye equipment. And I might be dealing with powders later, but um, right now everything's in liquid form. But when I am dealing with powders, I do wear a dust mask or respirator. Um, but given that um, I'm recovering from a cold right now, uh, I won't. We'll, we'll see. I might not want to do any of the respirator stuff on camera because um, <laughs> tonight might not be a good night for me to speckle, even though I really kind of want to speckle. Um, so that might have to save that for another day. But I think that it's going to be just a lot of fun, and I'm really, really excited about these bright, vibrant colors. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sailing smooth right now, you guys. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me hide my face and this image, and let's get started. Um, oh wait, the thumbnail. <laughs> um, All right. So right off the bat, I would like to start. Ooh, and actually, I am going to bring the inspo pick back up and make it small. I'm planning on doing some hand painting tonight, but we're going to get started by creating a yellow face on some yarn. In my pot right now, I have 16 cups of water, and I'm not going to add any vinegar yet. I'm going to get some gloves. But I'm getting this started in case I feel like I'd be able to like talk and breathe through my mask at the same time. Normally I don't have a problem with that, but I think you guys would like to be able to hear me. Uh, all right, so I've got 16 cups of water and I want to add 
Okay, so what the this first stock solution that I have here is one that I made. Goodness, I made this when I was dying the Hanukkah colorway in October. This is Dharma Brilliant Yellow. This started as a 1% stock solution. And I am going to add, whoops, whoops, that's a double whoops. I splashed and well, I don't think I've got it on my shirt actually. Um, and I have protected my work surface with a shower curtain and yeah, I missed my shirt. Um, that is good luck. And is there, do we have some growies in there? Eh. I don't think there's any growies per se. Uh, no, I think we just got a little bit of powder. Okay. Two tablespoons is not a lot. That would be about 0.3 grams. So that's not a ton. Um, but let's add some yarn in and we can decide if we want to add some more color. Um, I'm using, I'm going to be adding 200 grams of, yeah, 200 grams of yarn to the pot. Um, 100 grams of Stroll fingering weight yarn, which is a favorite around here. Um, Stroll is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And then we are also adding 100 grams of Hawthorne, which is 80% superwash fine highland wool, 20% um, polyamid, which is a type of nylon. And from just dipping it, we can get a little bit of a sense of the yellow that this might become. And see, if it is this bright as what I see in there, then I would be pretty happy with it. Um, hmm. But I'm concerned that it might be a little pale. Try to like check out my inspiration photo. Certainly it's not binding yet because there's no vinegar and no heat. Um, all right, what I'm gonna do so I'm going to add the vinegar, then I'm going to cook this, and then if we need to add more dye, we can add more dye. Um, I'm going to add two, about four tablespoons, and then I'm going to go get this cooking. So that was 16 cups of water. What is it? That was 16 cups of water, two tablespoons of yellow dye. I'm writing this all down. 16 cups of water, four tablespoons vinegar, two, 1% yellow. Now, one obvious thing that I could be doing today that I did not do that you guys might be wondering about is I could have been using citric acid. And with this inspiration photo, I should be using citric acid. Um, it would make sense. It's a very common thing that um, a lot of dyers use over vinegar. Um, the reason why I'm sticking to vinegar tonight is I am a lot more comfortable with vinegar. But if I'm going to speckle later, I would be adding some citric acid into the mix. Um, so if I'm able to see this project all the way through, I will try to bring some citric acid into, into my technique tonight. But otherwise, I'm going to be using vinegar just because I'm, uh, sometimes I am better suited for some full-on experimentation and trying something new. But for this, I wanted to do something that I knew like that I have enough acid. Um, and, oh, so when I said before, are there growies? I'm like, is there like um, anything like growing in my stock solution? Like, um, you know, like mold or yeast or something. Um, <coughs> excuse me, everyone. Uh, it, 
Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's something that, like, any, like, these sock solutions aren't sterile, so in theory they could get contaminated, but it didn't look like, um, from a lot of the stuff that I've done, like, in the lab, it didn't look, usually if there's, like, something growing, um, I, you often, like, see, like, a bigger clump of something. Um, so let's see. Um, can you dye, um, can I use dye from a t-shirt dyeing kit on cotton yarn? Absolutely. Um, Amaris, um, I have, yeah, there's a number of videos on the channel. There's even a whole playlist of cotton dyeing videos and a lot of stuff in there. Um, could this be done for the dye along? Yeah, you can absolutely dye fiber. Um, you do not have to dye things, um, for the dye along. Uh, you can dye any, uh, basically anything you want. Um, I'd love to see like what you do. It's basically, you know, just be inspired by this picture. That's the, the main thing. Um, but I'm so glad so many of you are able to join tonight. Um, if you're just tuning in tonight, we are going to be dyeing um, a few different um, skeins of yarn inspired by this bright, fresh, citrusy photo. And so what I just started was kettle dyeing um, two skeins, sort of just as a yellow base, with the thought of doing some speckling over that if I think that I would be able to handle the like um, talking and breathing through my respirator at the same time while I'm doing the speckling. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a little bit hoarse tonight. <laughs> um, and so that might be a little harder um, for me to do right now. But I'm actually feeling pretty good now, <laughs> so that's that's great. Um, oh, I love, that's why I love these live streams. I love to try to answer questions. And there's a lot of you in the chat tonight, so if I miss a question, when you see my head pop up, feel free to ask again. But there's a lot of people um, who, like I know, have watched a lot of my videos in the chat as well. So if you guys help me out and answer questions too, you guys are all the best. Um, yeah, so in addition to like that kettle dyeing thing that we've got going on, I'm planning on hand painting some yarn. And yeah, I am going to make the inspiration photo. Hmm, I'm trying to decide how big I want to make it. I guess I'm going to make it tiny over this. Um, so over, I'm kind of covering up this, I guess it's like a one half percent stock solution of some pink that I made earlier. Um, I want to have it, I want to be able to see it. I guess I'll just leave it tiny. Maybe I can have it bigger on my computer so that way I can see it. Um, okay, there. So then I have it as reference. Um, but um, when is the shop update? Um, I updated. Uh, so the, I added some new yarn to the Chemnitz Creations. Oh, I'm going to lose my head. Yeah. Um, I added some new yarn to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store uh, earlier this week. Um, and so a lot of the yarn from the December dialogue, well, some of it has sold already, but there's still a few skeins um, from some of the December dialogue video, in addition to some other new skeins that have gone in there. Um, and... Yeah, and my shop is filled for those of you that don't know, um, I will drop a link into the chat, but the shop is filled with hundreds of skeins of yarn that has been featured in past and up upcoming um, Chemist Tutorials YouTube videos. And there's also opportunities to sponsor episodes of Dive Out Weekly and more. I just dropped the link in the chat. So thank you guys. I'm so glad so many of you were a are able to join tonight. All right, let's, oh, I want to keep that image up. Um, oh, I'm so glad that you like the videos. Thank you. All right, I'm now going to get set up for some hand painting. Okay. I'm checking um, over here. Checking on the stove. Oh, yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with the way the yellow is going, although it might lighten considerably. Um, I want some plastic wrap. Where is everything? So, 
I there's I haven't found a good like replacement for plastic wrap that is I would love to have something that's reusable but still can like seal things up well from hand painting um, but I want to do a couple different hand painted versions um, that will then steam although I'm currently in my steam pot um, that's currently where I'm doing the semi-solid right now but oh shoot I wanted to set up my squeeze bottles first <laughs> I'm on a roll <coughs> Excuse me, sorry guys. Oh. All right, let's think. How much, how deep of a color do I want? Okay, let's, actually, let's bring over the yarn and then we'll mix the colors. Because, now this yarn, the first yarns I did not pre-soak in any acid. This is another skein of a stroll fingering. This is a 75-25 Superwash super Merino Nylon. And this I have just a very simple um, hand-painted pattern that I want to do with like a pop of pink and a lot of yellow. At least that's sort of what I'm thinking right now. But when I'm doing hand painting, sometimes I let the colors speak to me and that sort of determines how I go from there. But as I mentioned, over here I had mixed, it's about a half percent stock solution. I wanted to see just how bright that was looking. Um, okay, I do think I want to dilute it some more. I should get gloves back on. Um, I like, I don't think I ever put links to this in the description, but I like these Kimberly Clark nitrile gloves these are actually the same ones i was a stockroom manager when i was in grad school and these are the same gloves that i ordered for us after testing lots and lots of gloves oh that's so cool um okay i think hmm. now the squeeze bottles that i've got today um, these are some that I ordered from Dharma a while ago, and I have not used them yet. So, okay, good. There are already holes in the tips. I don't have to, like, cut it or anything. Um, let's see. Okay, well, that's good at least. And let's do... Um, Do a quarter cup of pink. Oh, I'm going to dilute this with two quarter cups of water. All right, so the pink, it's got three quarters cup of water. Sorry, three quarters cup total volume. Um, I've got one quarter cup of the dye and then two quarter cups of water. And I'm gonna mix something that is the same concentration of the yellow, but I'm gonna use a quarter cup of the dye and then a full cup of water. Um, wait a minute. Let's see. No, I'm going to use a quarter cup of dye, a quarter cup of water, and then a full cup of water. Um, and that will be the same because this is about a 1% stock solution. And then I can always add more color. As needed. I'm going to take this over to the sink. Goodness, I haven't hand painted in a while. One. Oh, 
all right and that's good because we're going to want much more of the yellow than we do of the pink anyway i like having these bigger bottles i forget how big these ones are i use i reuse the tulip tie-dye ones a lot but those are the tulip tie-dye ones are um Let's see what's it they're only like two ounces maybe they're small they're really small i'm checking in on we're not yet at a simmer but actually looks like our yellow has almost completely cleared in our stock pot which is good um let me see if there are any questions Oh, I'm so glad that you're going to start dying. All right. Um, okay. So we've got our pink. I'm wondering what I'm going to think about this diluted color. Oh, okay. There we go. And I haven't tried these squeeze bottles yet. Well, that's pretty nice. So I was pre-soaking this with... Oh goodness, four, three or four tablespoons of white vinegar. And I did wring out a lot of the water um, beforehand. And okay, I just added on like a tiny bit of the pink and you can see that we're not getting great color penetration. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Probably, wow probably because those colors are striking pretty fast. Whoa, voice. <clears throat> there we go. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> oh, guys. I am croaking here. Okay. Going a little heavier now. Squeezing out, intensifying this pink color. But I'm curious if this is going to be striking so fast without like any heat because as we know maybe a little bit as we know from food coloring um a lot and at least with my whatever my tap water is some food coloring the red number three will start striking to this yarn with basically no um with basically no acid or no acid at all. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now I'm doing this one with a pop of pink that's hand painted. And then I'm planning on doing the rest of this one yellow. Um, but I'm sort of flipping this over and doing this pink first. So that way I can sort of um, set it aside. And as I add the color, sort of squeezing it through. And actually, I'm pretty happy with this penetration. Um, the one thing I'll note is that I'm not using any kind of thickener. There's not any guar gum or anything in here. So, oh, and I got a little pink right there already. Um, so when I go and set this, the color might bleed and travel up some. Um, that's certain that's something that can just happen um, if you want to have like a sharper line then try using some guar gum or a thickener and that will really help um, it'll prevent sort of like the bleeding at the edge so if you want like a sharp sharp line now I do want to leave like a tiny bit I'm not sure how big I do want to leave like a little white border not because I don't want um, yellow um, or I don't want orange. I mean, I like orange. Um, certainly, this would be one way that we can try to avoid orange. But the reason why I want to leave the little bit of border is just because there is white, white in the photo. And so that is sort of my thought with this first one. Um, hi, guys. <laughs> 
Um, and what was I going to say? Uh, certainly I could have intensified that pink a bit, but I think that it's not very neon, but it's definitely not pastel. Let's see. Oh, hello, yellow. So with this first colorway, I'm doing it hand painted, mainly because um, technique wise, this is something that would be easy for me to do on the live stream. But with this kind of color that I'm creating, you definitely could dip. Um, you could dip the, dip the yarn in one color and then in the other. Oh, actually, there's not very much liquid on this side at all. Um, I can't really squish it yet. That is funny. Um, Oh, that is striking fast. Whoo. Gonna like move this around a bit. Um, one other thing, I'm not going very far in. I'm leaving a wider section of white than I will probably leave in the end. And that is because I, oh. um, that's because it's easier to like go and add more. It's harder to go and remove um, like I can always make the white smaller. I can't then backtrack and make it bigger. If that makes any sense. I feel like this yellow is called brilliant yellow for a reason. Okay. Now I'm finally able to squish it a bit. If you're going to be adding a lot of volume when you're hand painting, you really do want to remove as much of the water as you can. But one thing that is fun about hand painting is like, I can keep adding more color. I'm not sure if you guys can, maybe you can't tell some of this little, um, little variation of color in here. Um, you know, you can leave that or not. It's sort of, up to you and it's just I don't know I, I really do enjoy hand painting I think it's something that actually suits itself better for a live stream than it does a pre-filmed video because it usually does take a bit longer and then I start singing to myself apologies everybody I really like these squeeze bottles. Unlike, well, okay, I suppose that the tulip tie-dye ones are designed with dyeing in mind as well. Um, but Dharma Trading Company, um, and I don't even have an affiliate code or anything with them, but they are, you know, a dye supply company. Um, so their customers are all kinds of fabric painters and dyers and everything. So you know, the products that the, then they carry are designed with this, with these uses in mind. But I'm sort of digging where this is headed. And so I'm going in and I don't mind, again, as I said, there's some like variation in here. I'm trying to make sure that there aren't like big white, aha. Yeah, this yellow, this Dharma Brilliant Yellow strikes really, really fast has been my experience so far when I've played with this color. But I'm really just trying to avoid on white patches right now. Yeah, but with some colors, and maybe if I had a little less acid in here, I might be able to squish things through more. But again, I sort of enjoy um, this modeled feel because there is like there's a level of control, but also not control over this and I'm going to go and check on our 
steam pot. I have no idea how long that's been cooking, but that is, we've got some beautiful tonal yellows back there. Um, I just turned off the heat. I'm gonna remove those from the pot. If I know where my, I find a pan, a suitable pan. So, the timing is good because we're close to being ready to steam this one. Let me show you. So this is the yellow we got from just two tablespoons of that Dharma yellow dye. Um, so that's a very, very nice yellow. Um, all right, let's see. Um, I'm not sure of the uh, of the other store. Yes, so if if you guys are interested in getting some of this Knit Picks yarn that I'm using, I do have an affiliate link in the video description. And um, I guess full disclaimer, so I have been a Knit Picks affiliate for about a year, although I've been using their yarns for I'm approaching a decade um, for of time that I've spent using their yarns. And so if you use my link, um, being an affiliate means that I do get commission off of sales made through my links. Um, but obviously you don't have to use my link or anything like that. But I just wanted to make sure that there was full disclosure on that. But I use the products because I love to knit with them and I love to dye them. So I'm now sort of like closing in on this white region. Mm, let's do a tiny bit more. I might lose all of the white, but we shall see. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I think I'm about ready to try to steam this. Hopefully I brought the lid for the pot inside. If I didn't, that would be a really big oversight. I got it from Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, not, again, I'm not an affiliate or anything. That's just the kind of, it's a stainless steel pot and I've been very, very happy with it. Okay, I'm gonna take this plastic wrap and really give some good wrap attention around that pink and maybe actually do the same thing with some of this yellow. those white sections a little bit on top. Now I'm gonna go and steam this. Oh, I didn't take a picture. Oh well. <laughs> I'm gonna go and steam this for 20 minutes. Using the Hopefully the lid may have been a little cold, but it's using the same water that I was using before. Oh, funny. I have the like surface light on the, um, on my stove and which is a little hilarious because I'm not filming on the stove today, but I was all set up like I was going to be filming over there. Um, oh good, you're getting nice and steamy right away. All right, I'm gonna come over, 
So there's nothing to see. I will make our inspiration photo bigger and pop back up. Hey guys. Oh. Um, yeah, so let's see. The, the two yarns I'm using today. Ooh, there's a no, new Preciosa tonal worsted at Knit Picks. Um, oh, it looks like Tweed Yarns. I haven't gone to their website today. So, yeah, the Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn that I'm using tonight is um, $8.99 for 100 grams. Um, but I buy it in 20 packs, and if you buy a 20 pack, you get 15% off um, for a buy-in in bulk with the Berry Yarns. And so, there's a lot of um, bulk discounts and stuff for that. Uh, da, 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 da. I want to see in the chat. Um, thank you. Yeah, I'm. I realized I've been pulling tons of just like fruit and citrus images, and something about this like really spoke to me. Felt very summery, very fresh. And it's so cold here right now. So, so cold. I'm like, you know, I, I'm a person who I much prefer being cold than hot, but I'm still craving warmer weather. Um, the pink was jacquard pink. Um, all the dye that I'm using tonight are acid dyes. Um, it's jacquard pink. And it was, let's see, in the bottle, if it was... 0.5, whatever 0.5 divided by 3 is the percent, approximately. I was actually having trouble on my scale weighing the, the pink out. I think that there wasn't like a ton left in there, and I was just having trouble getting it to register. So I think that the original stock I mixed was approximately a half percent, um, but I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, I used Dharma Brilliant Yellow and Jacquard Pink. Um, and so the other day I was playing around, um, I was playing around with yellow and then adding some colors on top of it. And I got a colorway that felt, ended up feeling very fall instead of feeling like fresh. I mean, it's so bright, but I was wanting like fresh and bright. And so I'm curious about seeing like if with the things that I tried today, if I'm going to be able to keep some of the yellow and pink separate, um, or will it end up feeling fall? Um, I don't mind if I get something that feels sunset. Um, I like sunsets, but yeah. Um, will I be doing any snow dyeing? If I get snow, which maybe we're going to get snow this weekend. If I get snow, then I can do snow dyeing. But we have only had like the smallest dusting of snow so far. Um, oh, pretty. Um, yeah, the... My sister-in-law was just in um, the Sydney area with her family, and she said that it was wicked, wicked hot. <laughs> okay, she didn't use the word wicked because that's like Boston slang versus like British slang, <laughs> but. <laughs> and yes, all of you that are, you are gonna die along, there's a few ways to share pictures with me. Um, if you're part of the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group, which I will drop into, um, I'll drop the link into the chat right now. There is a thread for sharing pictures, and but anything shared in the Facebook group is private. I will not pull any pictures that you share there um, to be featured. If you want to be featured, make sure, or a chance to be featured in the recap from this live stream, make sure you use either the hashtag Chemnitz Dialong on Instagram or um, reply to the official thread on the public Chemnitz Facebook page. There's a link to that picture in the video description, um, but it, the picture is that picture right there. Um, and just reply to that, and then I might pull your pictures and include them in a video. Oh, I heard, I don't know, I haven't checked the Weather Channel, but I heard like rumblings of a big storm. I, um, yeah, the, oh, I need to go reduce the heat. Pardon me. Um, whoa. All right, so far I'm still seeing white. That's good, but I think some of my steam pot may have been a little vigorous. At least we know it's not going to go dry. 
Um, <coughs> hmm. You're so nice and warm. Trying to like let that other yellow cool off. Um, I'm not sure, as I said, if I'm going to be able to speckle tonight. I might, oh, I might need to hold off, but I was, um, because when I put my, like, the, the face mask on, it was making me cough a little more because I was having to, like, breathe differently. Um, you know, close to Lake Erie. Uh, okay, now I'm curious, you guys. I'm going to check the weather. I hope that we don't get any snow days though. Um, ooh, it does look like a storm is coming. East, expect snow. Um, yeah, from Saturday, um, Saturday afternoon. You guys, I might get to do some snow dying. Ooh. Uh, yeah, it looks like snow dying might be on the docket because it looks like we're getting snow, unless it warms up too much. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm in Boston, so sometimes, like, there was the winter, gosh, about five, no, four years ago, right before we moved back here, there was a winter where there was so much snow, and there was, like, nowhere to put it. Um, well, I hope all of you that are getting a lot of snow tonight um, are safe. Um, and are warm. Hopefully you're snuggled up with some good knitting or weaving or spinning or something. Um, you know, we had company with kids from California over New Year's and we were really hoping that we would get some snow for them and we didn't and so I was really sad because I really was hoping that these California kids could wake up and see like snow and be all excited even if there wasn't enough for sledding or anything but we didn't get a chance to show them that. Um, and so I was, I was sad, but yeah, I'm wondering, yeah, I'm wondering what my, one year we had enough, he built like a little, our, our property is small um, and it's real, and it's flat, but keep, we had enough snow that keep built this like ramp. Okay, it wasn't like that much of an incline. It was like that much of an incline, but then it was like enough that the kids could like sled down a little bit. And it was kind of perfect because with the young kids, you don't really want to like, do, they don't want to do it too much anyway, but so it was really, really fun. Um, but yeah, and so if you guys have any, any questions or anything, please let me know in the chat. But uh, so far, if you're just tuning in, I hand painted one skein and we've done some semi-solids. And I might, I might be able to do the speckling. <laughs> I'm like trying to like, manually sorry i don't want to be like gross <laughs> um but with young kids you get stuff um you got your yarn and spinning wheel woohoo that sounds awesome all right i want to hand paint another skein and i'm not entirely sure how i want to do it I'm really liking these squeeze bottles. They don't squirt out too much. They feel like um, there's really nice control. I'm, ooh, and I have a fair amount left. Not as much as the yellow, but I'm like really debating in what I want to do. Because one idea, well, I've had lots of ideas. This picture would lend itself really, really well to like a soft blank of some kind. Um, this would be a really easy pattern to try to draw on a blank. There I would definitely use guar gum so you wouldn't have bleeding, but I think you could like recreate this picture on a blank and it would be stunning. Um, or do something a little more abstract with polka dots, sort of like I did in the October dye along um, with the first one for the leaves. Um, so that's something, uh, an idea that I've had. Um, but in terms of hand painting another um, skein of yarn, um, one idea that I had was actually sort of a comp what I think we did this in November, but to use some zip ties <coughs> to create some resist points. Um, so then, like, 
then there could be like the the yellow with a tiny bit of yellow but with some like spots of white in there um that was one idea i had although i'm now wondering if with the sock yarn hmm if i'd be able to get it tight enough around it maybe the other skein of yarn that i have prepped is hawthorn which is a little denser so it's not quite as fluffy um i could see if i could get the zip tie tight enough or i could just go like totally random with the yellow and pink and layer them on top of one another but that would probably end up with some orange uh, so i don't know i'm like let me go grab some of the zip ties i think i might want to try playing with that but i also just sort of like i'm loving these squeeze bubbles and i just want to like squirt them all over the yarn um Ooh, lemon has a stamp. I mean, like in theory, you could use lemon juice as your vinegar source too. Um, so, but again, like you, if you're dying along, you don't have to take the color story literally. You could look at this and you could do like neon with like a pop of color. Like, you know, the, if you're doing something that isn't like obvious, like, oh, I see it with the picture, then tell me how it was inspired and stuff. Um, would lemon halves work? I'm not sure if a lemon half would work as a stamp or not. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it would be cool if it would work. Uh, huh, okay, hold on. Nope, let me make this tiny. Hmm. I don't have a lemon, but I have a lime that I just went and cut in half. Sacrificing a lime. I mean, it's kind of like a old lime. Yeah, I don't think, um, unless you were to, maybe you would need to squeeze it out first. To get it to be like a reasonable stamp. Yeah, and even then, okay, so ow. Okay, that's stinging. Um, I just went and squeezed it uh, to see if like the lines would kind of stay, and they aren't really. I don't think um, it would work as a great stamp, unfortunately. Uh, Yeah, because I think, well, I mean, you wouldn't know unless you tried, but all right, good news, my steaming yarn, I still have some good white sections there. Oh, right, I was going to get zip ties, walking around my life. these and I probably have a link to these in the video description if not I have the, um, an Amazon affiliate link in some other descriptions I love these um, sometimes I'll use them instead of adding another tie um, so they're just zip ties but they are reusable which makes them great for dyeing yarn because <coughs> excuse me uh, since it's reusable then um, you know there's less waste and then i can play around with it but it's great for I'm using a steam pan flipping yarn around and whatnot okay. and so this the plastic wrap given that my countertop is protected with this shower curtain the plastic wrap is really so that way i can try to keep the yellows and pinks from bleeding together um which sometimes works a bit better than others but we shall see okay 
All right, so this skein is the Nick Hawthorne. And this is the one that's a little more rustic. It's a little denser. Um, it is, yeah, it's just a two-ply. It's 80% superwash wool, 20% um, polyamid. And I'm curious if, because there's a limit to how tight these can go. And, hmm, it's not that tight. Definitely. Huh. Yeah, I might need to go. Let me see. Uh oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That might be a little too hard, but I think I can go like so. This should work. There we go. That should work nicely as like a resist. Now it's going to be a little hard to get, um, some color in, but we'll see what we can do. I don't want these to like be evenly spaced. It's like a deliberate, so I'm thinking like I'd go pink to maybe a gap. So do something very similar to the last one, but hmm. All right. Do I want one more? Nah, I think that's pretty good. All right. Let's see. I could tie knots on the yarn. Yes. And that's something that I've done before. One of the reasons why I went with the zip ties this time is because um, this is a lot faster. Um, definitely you could get some waist yarn and tie knots. <coughs> I always feel a little nervous with the removal process. Um, nervous that I'd cut the yarn and um, this, I also like don't mind the slightly larger sections of color maybe, so. You just have to let it dry. Cut the, the lemon snap out. Yeah, potato would work. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I saw the other half of the line that I could try. I don't think I have dye that's thick enough to stamp with. If I have some stuff left over, I will use that. Right now, I'm hand painting. This is the Hawthorne yarn base, and it was soaked in some water with vinegar. And oh, my timer is about to go off. But I'm going to do pink to about there. Potentially go beyond that. Resist point. Oh, okay. This is spreading out a bit better on the Hawthorne than it did on the um, stroll. Okay, my timer is about to go off. And I'm trying to think about where I'm going to move all my various yarn friends. Do over here. Okay, I'm turning off the steamer pot now. Gently removing the yarn that we just steamed. Oh dear, can I turn this over again? So here is 
the yarn that we just steamed for the first one we hand painted. Um, I just steamed it for 20 minutes. And now I'm just gonna let it sit and cool. It's still gonna be getting some heat in this cooling portion. Um, so, yeah, the, the heat, I guess, the heating is not yet done with it. It will get some more heat um, from just sort of sitting there. All right, adding some more pink uh, to both intensify the color and get us color throughout um, this region. Trying to not go too far beyond I do want to kind of, okay, it does look like we are going towards that center a bit. I have no idea how well this resist will work. Um, I haven't done this with hand painting with these acid dyes yet. So this is very experimental, but at least looks like we're getting some really good penetration of the color right off the bat and oh, I love being able to like pick up the ties there we go wiping off my hands so I can do the yellow I might need to mix more of the yellow but we shall see um yes I'm not sure about European sources for the liquid writ dyes but maybe someone in the chat Although I know we've got a lot of people from Canada and the U.S. right now, but it's pretty late in Europe right now, so I don't know if any, uh, how many Europeans are in the chat right now. Uh, I tend to get a lot of Europeans when I do the early morning streams. But clearly, whoever was asking is likely European. <laughs> No, I'm just always aware of like, oh, can we call, um, we've got family in London, so we're like, oh, can we call them now? No, it's too late, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, I feel like these colors are Oh, I like being able to flip it like that. Um, the colors are definitely soaking in a little bit easier with the Hawthorn. Not that I've noticed a real difference between how um, quickly colors absorb between Hawthorn and Stroll. In fact, they feel very similar to me. Um, and I did just kettle dye them in the same pot. I haven't checked to see if like the colors look very different. I'll check in a minute. But I have a feeling that this yarn will end up looking a lot like the first, but I am excited um, to see if these resists work. Um, oh, good. I mean, not good, but there are some paler sections that need more color. Means that we've got a shot at having some white left behind. very focused <laughs> you can always tell I'm thinking when I'm thinking a lot uh, because then I stop talking all right this is actually really really nice and I'm pretty excited about this oh, guys I keep meaning to have like 
a blank on hand to just use as a rag um, to just like wipe up um, excess dye, but that has been bad. Just using a paper towel. All right, the one thing I'll say is that these zip ties are nylon, so they will um, take up color. Um, and this one, whew, I have a feeling that we're gonna have some, we might get some orange in that in-between section. I'm just sort of gonna lift this into the steam pot. So back on sort of position, sort of arching the zip ties down so that way I can close it and set a timer for 20 minutes. Okay, let's see. The, let's clean up a tiny bit and think about I do think I want to try to do this speckling. Um, so what I'm curious about and the kind of speckling that I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it on one of the skeins and save another one. Um, I'm going to be doing sort of like a hand painted type of speckling, um, which would be me um, laying it on the counter, doing the speckles on the counter and then steam setting it versus doing a low immersion style speckling. Um, which I've done a few times lately in the steam pan. And that's mainly because of where I have the camera set up. Um, but first I wanna wipe that down. And I'm gonna show you what our yellows look like. My hands are so sweaty. I do try to reuse gloves, um, but uh, sometimes in these streams it's a bit harder. Oof, that is still a bit hot. Um, <coughs> yeah, so what I'm unsure about is if I try, um, and I guess the yellow is similar to the yellow that I was hand painting with, but what I'm curious about is if I try to use the pink dye powder on top of the yellow, will the pink be concentrated enough that it'll read pink? Or is it gonna look orange because of the mixing with the yellow? And one of the reasons why I think there's a chance it could look pink, a chance, a little chance, but a chance that it could look pink, um, I is because the other day I had a pink face and I was speckling with green and the green still looked green. So I'm thinking like, okay, if the pink is a lot more concentrated in that area, it could overwhelm the yellow, but maybe not. So it may or may not work. Um, I, yeah, the colors are so, so, so bright. Um, but yeah, oh, you, all you in the UK staying up so late. Thank you, I'm so glad you guys are watching. And Sweden. Um, all right. Um, let's think. Uh, I need them to cool a little bit more. I don't want to put out plastic wrap. Um, and the kind of speckling. Oh, okay. I want you guys to vote. Um, I'm going to do one of the bases. The other one I will save and then try to do that hot later on. Um, but would you rather see me speckle? The stroll or the hot one um, using the like countertop um, cool ish speckling technique. Um, and yes, the two colors that I'm using right now are Dharma Brilliant Yellow and Jacquard Pink. I have some Jacquard Sun Yellow still mixed up, but as you might remember, that color is sort of my nemesis because that one turns to jelly. Like, like solid in the one percent stock solution um so a little uh irritating uh, i'm gonna turn down the heat on the steam pot okay uh, 
guys can go in there. So can you guys. Let's spread. But yeah, so I got the Hawthorne and the ooh, you are a little warm. Oh no, are you tingled? I picked you up in a dumb way. Uh oh. You might get tingled. Oh, Rebecca, 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 you know better. Oh, we're not tangled. Ha ha. Okay. Um, yeah, the colors between the Hawthorne and the Stroll dyed in the same pot look very, very similar. I'll bring them over, although I was just trying to make them not like drip horribly, but I'm not sure if you guys can, hopefully you guys can see them. There they are, our semi-solids. Um, but yeah, so let me know which one you would like to see me attempt to speckle and we'll see how my talking works through the mask. Um, oh. oh, Jessica's Will Emporium, thank you so much for the super chat, thank you. Um, Jessica's comment says, thank you Rebecca for inspiring so many people to experiment and go beyond their comfort zone. Thank you so much, um, which is a reminder, a nice segue, if you guys love what you see here and wanna help support the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, at the bottom of the chat, there's a little dollar sign, and that's a super chat. It's sort of like a tip jar. Um, and so it's a way that you can contribute directly to all things Chemnitz. Um, there are a few other ways that you can support the channel. Um, I do have a Patreon. Um, there's a link in the video description and the iCard. Um, Patreon's a platform where um, people can um, support the creators that they really enjoy. Um, and so it's sort of like subscribing on a monthly basis and there's some really cool perks like early access to new yarn dyeing videos and things like that. Um, I also have an Etsy shop and I have some merchandise on Zazzle right now and some other merchandise is coming soon. Oh dear. Um, um, if it's buffering, try, uh, Mine still seems to be working. Um, if it's buffering, try um, refreshing the browser. Let's see, Hawthorne. So the difference between Hawthorne and Stroll. Hawthorne is a two-ply, 80% superwash, fine Highland wool, 20% polyamide sock yarn. And Stroll is four-ply, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. They're both fingering weight but the plies are a little more defined on Hawthorne because there's two, so each ply is a little thicker, and so therefore it has a little more of a rustic feel to it, even though it's still like soft and mm -hmm. nice. Um, so, yeah, but it looks like Hawthorne is the winner, and so I'll bring that out. Um, or actually, first I will get all kit it up. So I'm going to put on my like rough gold mask so I will be sounding really muffled. And I put on safety goggles and we are going to do a new to me version of speckling. We'll see how I like it, but we're going to add some powder and some citric acid powder and some dye powder into a salt shaker, which I might end up regretting, but that's what we're going to do. <laughs> I know that it's something that works well for a lot of people. I haven't um, tried it myself. Um, yay! I'm so, so glad. Um, the comments said that they've been watching my videos recently and want to learn how to die. Um, yay! That means I'm doing my job. Okay. <coughs> 
Um, I can't tell you the driest, but I can't believe I thought I had an open one somewhere. Um, the reason why I have this food grade citric acid is that my use of citric acid started not from yarn dyeing, um, but from, uh, it started from, I would make like fizzy back hauls. Um, and so that's why, oh man, I'm all muffled now. Because I have a lot of citric acid. Okay. I'm gonna show you guys my uh <laughs> Hello. Um this is my new respirator. I I guess I don't think I have a link to it in the video. I also have dust masks that um, in the past, I would use that don't muffle the voice as much. So if you're watching the video and I don't sound super muffled, I'm probably using a lighter one. But I got these ones with just the rechangeable filters because uh, I could get more uses out of it and I thought it would be more cost effective. Um, have I tried a small strainer? No. Um, well, sort of. I use like a tea ball and then I have like a dust bin wand. So kind of, I suppose. Um, gloves. <coughs> oh, lovely. <clears throat> Probably should have used a disposable mask. But I don't know if I'm going to cough in it. Oh, dear. Okay. So here's a salt shaker, and I'm doing a ultra scientific proportion here, which is to say not scientific at all. And I just poured citric acid all over my counter. Okay, I've got a lot of citric acid in there. <laughs> Some other ways I've heard people do this. Hmm. It's going to be really fun to. Some other ways that I've heard people do this are if you use salt. But actually, some salt can slow down the absorption of color. So one reason to use citric acid is it can help the colors bind really, really quickly. Okay, so I have some Jacquard Pink. Um, this is the same color that I had mixed. And I'm just tapping some. Oh. Now this bottle de definitely had less than a gram in it. So there's not a ton that went into here. And I don't even know if you guys can see. Uh, oh, wow. No pizza on my hands. Okay. Uh, that's the do the towel. I'm gonna move the laptop around so I can see what the camera sees. Okay. I'm trying to show you guys that there's like about how much is in here. I did not measure it. Uh, and I am covering this and just sort of mixing it. Okay. So we now have this slurry of dye and citric acid. And one of the reasons to do this, and one of the like perks of doing this, is that now when we speckle, each time I shake this, um, salt shaker. We're going to get some citric acid coming out, but less dye than we would have had otherwise, if that makes sense. Now, many of you that have been watching me for a while know that I 
really like using <coughs> I really like using my hands on the speckle. I like the touch and the feel. I have a feeling I might still prefer to do it by touch, but I think that I might like doing it by touch with a mixture of citric acid and powder. So I think I might enjoy that. Let's see. Um, how big are the holes in the salt shaker? Um, the holes are pretty big. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see. Um, the sound is muffled. Um, the sound is muffled because I'm wearing the respirator. <laughs> so that's why the sound is muffled right now. Um, Yes, yeah, so when I'm using acid dyes like um, like I am today, then everything I'm using is dedicated dye stuff. None of this is stuff that I use for food. Um, oh dear. Um, oh, I wanted to lay out some plastic wrap first. So I even have like dedicated plastic wrap and all that jazz. So, oh my goodness. Oh, I'm fine. Oh no. See, this is why I've dedicated plastic wrap. Now, sometimes with speckling, I don't bother. Um, sometimes if I'm doing counter speckling, if it's all over type speckling, I won't bother laying down plastic wrap at all. Um, here, I'll move this up for a sec. Okay, so if I'm doing all over speckling, <coughs> um, then I won't bother um, with plastic wrap. I'll just take the yarn and put it directly into the steamer basket of my steam pot. But because I'm not sure if I'm gonna speckle the whole thing, I might just do like half or an end. I haven't decided how it's, we're going to see how it looks um, before I decide. Um, and so therefore I want the plastic wrap in case I'm only doing a portion. Um. <laughs> oh, no worries, D. I, wait, if I'm sounding muffled or something, I always appreciate people telling me. Um, it's just today, right now, there is a, a reason for it. So that is it. Okay. Here is our Hawthorne yarn. Um, actually, I'm going to lay you this way. So this is the yarn that, as I said, is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Poly Amid. Okay, and so the difference here is that when I speckle, it's not necessarily going to strike right away. It could still spread out a bit. So we're not necessarily going to get super, super, super sharp speckles because we don't have any heat. This is now back at room temperature. But let's uh, see what happens. <laughs> you can see I'm like interesting. You can't tell color wise. So those are still pretty close together. Um So I'm feeling like I'm not a huge fan of the salt shaker, but they, the speckles are certainly farther apart than they would have been if this was just dye powder in here. So I have to say, I don't think it looks orange. Okay. Oh, that's 
out. That was a side effect I did not entirely foresee. Ugh. Okay, let's take some of this powder in my fingers. Let's go back to doing like the finger method. Oh goodness. I think I'm curious. Uh -huh. So I think that this is good for like, if you really want to be able to get some like super, super light speckles. Cool. Okay, I might go in and try to just do this all over. Uh-oh. Uh, the one, uh, all right, my hands are too sweaty, I'm going to have to swap out the gloves. Okay, I need another spot. Like moving around around. Do you think I'm watching me? <laughs> I'm hearing time repeats elsewhere. And I'm wondering if he's just watching me upstairs. Um, can you guys even see? You guys can't even really see those speckles. Um, ah, okay, sorry, I'm using, um, I'm using Jacquard, uh, pink, and Dharma, uh, brilliant yellow are the colors that I'm using today. Okay. And in the salt shaker, I have some citric acid with some of the jacquard pink. And let me see if I can zoom you guys in. Which, of course, I didn't like measure because. Um, let me see if I can zoom in. Hmm. Resolution does not look great. Mm. Yeah, I don't think the resolution is looking so great. I don't think you guys can really see the speckles. Yes, Rosanna said it great. The citric acid edition makes it strike faster and not bleed out. But since it's not hot, it could still, it's definitely bleeding out a bit um, because it isn't super hot. But I can't tell if it's orange or pink. Let me zoom back out. Uh, nope, that's not the right one. Here we go. And actually that's pretty good. <laughs> oh hi Keith. I didn't even see you in the chat. Okay. It was the beeping of the timer that gave it away. Um all right, we're gonna just go going full on with this diluted mixture which is actually really really fun to just go and and do and now see since i decided to just go for it i didn't even need the plastic wrap 
I could have, I could just add this to the steamer basket, sort of as is. The hard thing, so it's sort of hard for me to see like how good the coverage is, you know? Because it takes like a minute for the powder to get a little wet. But this is really fun. Not gonna lie, it's definitely spreading, but I gotta say it's looking pink to me. So that would be really exciting if it's like a yellow and pink. Even if it ends up looking a little orange, I think I'll be okay. Uh, oh my, I have, um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and steam this. Um, hmm, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to wrap it in the plastic wrap. I don't want to shake it. Okay, very, very carefully carrying it over and placing it into the hot steam basket. I'm gonna wash my hands. <laughs> so that way we can try to set this. Um, some of it might spread out. Oh, there's some dye here that is getting left behind. Oh, but there's a little more of the shaker than I might try to do with the hot method later. Oh, I'll set a timer in a minute, but I do want to come in. All oh, right, I was like, why does this feel so gritty? And that's because there is citric acid that's from when I poured in citric acid on here, but very little of the powder actually got um anywhere. Ah, I am myself again and I like to always just do a quick check to make sure whenever I've been doing any speckling I take a wet, a wet paper towel and I like rub it all over the floor. Um, in the vicinity. And well, so far there's no pink. <laughs> um, it's been a while. Um, so okay, we're good. <laughs> um, oh, I can check that. Yeah, we're good. Um, let me see how our original yarns are doing that we dyed today. Funny, the dyes definitely spread. So there was acid in the yarn because I dyed it. So I meant to add more acid to it. Oh well. There was acid in that because it had been dyed and not rinsed. Um, and then, so was, there was acid in there. What was the other thing? Um, certainly there was acid in what I was speckling, but I think that the heat is sort of important to help it just strike really fast. But we'll see how that comes out. Oh, you're still hot. But here's the first one we did. And yeah, it looks like um, we preserved these white areas. So unless we get some uh, real bleeding um, when we're washing it, this one should be pretty good for just having like a small pink section and a big yellow section. And yeah, you are so hot. Um, the one, yeah, our zip tie friend is also still warm. Uh, I'm like torn because I really want to be able to like open it up. But I also want to make sure it has the time to cool. Um, bummer. But yeah, here is our zip tied one that also had one end that was pink, a lot yellow, 
but we did tie it off in sections to see if we could get some any resist in there, which I have no idea if we did succeeded in or not. <laughs> but we're gonna let that keep continue cooling. Um, and then the one that we did just now was a speckly one, which yeah, it's feeling pinky. So it's kind of fun to play with colors that I don't play with a lot. Um, um, the Kool-Aid. <coughs> oh, if I'm, if I'm responding to stuff that you're not seeing yet, um, then maybe the chat is buffering, but uh usually like there's a bit of a delay i'm like about a minute so like it takes i think there's about a minute delay between what i say in real life and then what gets transmitted so if i were to go and turn on the volume on youtube right now i would hear stuff i was doing or saying about a minute ago um a small straight arc would give better coverage i mean yeah, so I haven't, I guess I tried the salt shaker with Kool-Aid once. Like, I, I like using my fingers with, with speckles. I've been very happy with just, you know, using the, like, the rub between my fingers to release out a little bit of the, the dye. Um, I haven't, I think that the Dharma dyes feel a little thicker. Like, the particles feel a little thicker than the Jacquard. The Jacquard ones feel a little finer and look a little finer from what I saw when that was hitting. I was like, ooh, those specks look smaller than the specks I was doing like the other day with the Dharma dyes. So I, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, of course, these ones were also more separated out because I had the citric acid in, mixed in with that dye. Um, so there's that as well. But I think that for sharp speckles, if it was hot, then they would have struck a lot faster. But it, of course, this wasn't hot. Um, yeah, the, the yarn wasn't hot anymore, um, and it cooled off too much. But so, but I didn't want necessarily need them to be like sharp, sharp, sharp. Um, I have certainly gotten speckles um, with this sort of technique in the past. Um, I, but yeah, it's I think better to have the yarn be hot so that it'll strike. Um, Right, exactly. So the, well, the yellow yarn is hot now because it's in the steam basket, but that's why things were spreading out because um, even though there was acid, it wasn't going to just strike super, super fast. Um, but so there might still be some splotches even with this, but that's why I wanted to do one cold um, and then try one hot and then we'll see, I'll be able to compare, even though it's not the same yarn base but just sort of trying it out, mixing with the citric acid. What I do think, what I do think I might like is mixing the dye powder with citric acid and then using it with my hands to sprinkle because that will allow me to get a much lighter coverage um, because when I use my hand, it's lighter than what I was getting with the salt shaker. And even the other strainers that I have, the holes are still pretty big. And so it's just, when I was using them, I would find that it would dump way too much of the dye in one spot. And it was harder, like with tapping a strainer or barely moving it. I found that I like having, like when I'm using my fingers, I have more control over dumping a lot versus a little. Whereas like, oh, if I move my arm a little too fast, it might dump too much out. Um, um, I mentioned guar gum. Yes, I definitely plan to do, I need to do another, I need to do a standalone video with guar gum. Um, I definitely plan to do that in the future. The only time I've used it so far, it was in a live stream. And um, <coughs> yeah, the guar gum has been on my, on my list and it's definitely there that and something that I want to play with. Um, um, what is the shelf life of Jacquard dye? Um, <coughs> ooh, that's a good, oh, did I not, I don't think I set a timer. Um, so I have no idea how long it has been. 
I'm going to set it for 15 minutes. Um, yeah, definitely spread out, but I'm really the but I'm really happy with the I'm happy with what's going on in there, even though it's not super speckly. Um, but I've definitely gotten speckles, not on this yarn base, but I think, what did I have for? I think that my vinegar concentration when I've done the speckling on the counter might have been higher to start with. I'd have to like think about that more. Um, I'm sorry, that's a digression. Um, what's a shelf life of jacquard dye? Can it go bad? Um, I mean, I'm sure that it could. Um, I'm, I think that the probably the bigger issue would be if it gets like too moist, it could clump. And so it would still work to dye things, but it would be harder to actually use and work with. Um, <coughs> the, I mean, I had, I'm using stock solutions that I mixed a year ago. And um, uh, I've been using up a lot of them this week actually. and. I've still been getting some really, really great color out of them. Now, a fiber reactive dye, those won't last in solution as long because they will react with the water. And so then um, you'll still see a lot of color in your dye, but it won't be able to bind the yarn because the parts of the dye that would react with the, with the yarn just, you know, aren't, it's not going to react <laughs> anymore. Um, so there's that. Uh, but I'm probably not the best person to know about the shelf life of the Jacquard dyes um, because I haven't been working with them quite as long as some other people. But I think that in dry, they should last a really long time, um, is my in in instinct. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I'm really, really excited. I know that. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I know that this speckle didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped, but I am really excited to try this out again with some low immersion on the stroll base. Um, but I think that I the yarn looks really happy, like yellow with these pops of pink and maybe a little orange. Um, so dye can mold in solution. Um, definitely. That's why at the beginning I was like, is that growies? And then it like went away. So I don't think that there were any, the growies are like mold or something. Um, how much is there in a jar of dye? Well, that depends on, um, that depends like on how intense you want the color to be. Um, so one jar of I mean, the jars of jacquard acid dyes that I got were a half ounce. Um, and the 1%, I made one liter 1% stock solution, still had some powders left over. I have not used up any of the jars yet. And I started, and I made the stock solutions over a year ago now. Um, so, you know, it's lasted me a long time. Now, I buy more, I've started buying the Dharma acid dyes because I think as for price per weight, um, they are cheaper than Jacquard, and I think they have some more colors, and um, so I went that direction because it would last longer. But I have, like, I have enough dye to last me a really, really, really long time. Um, and I think that in terms of like food coloring versus commercial acid dyes. Um, the equipment can be a little more expensive with the commercial acid dyes, just in terms of you want to have dedicated dye equipment. But in terms of like cost, like a color per yarn, food coloring is definitely more expensive than commercial dyes in terms of like what you can, how much stuff you can dye um, with the like amount of food coloring versus like the commercial acid dyes. Um, So I will say that even um, unless you're making your dye stocks like really, really, really acidic, stuff can grow in <laughs> um, um, stuff like stuff.
So it's not going to grow in vinegar. But um, you could, with like a slightly acidic solution or something, you could get something growing in there, um, potentially. I mean, I'm not, the dyes, like, like I was impressed by how non like growth there was in these stock solutions that are so old. There was one that maybe I think had something growing in it. Uh, but yeah, I was pretty impressed because I've definitely had a lot of buffers, see contamination and stuff over the years. So, <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna go check on, I'm steaming a little strongly. We're not cool, but I'm going to go ahead and open one of these up. Um, hopefully I don't like turn. Woohoo! We got resist. We got resist. It worked. It worked. I'm dancing to do. So now I'm gonna wash my hands. The dye should be set, but wanna just be sure. So yay! I am very, very excited to see um, how that turns out. I think I'll actually, I'm probably not gonna wash any of these tonight. Um, because, and I'm going to make my inspiration photo a little bigger, bring my face up. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like thumbnail poses. Uh, the, <coughs> excuse me guys. Um, I'm really, really glad that the, that the resist worked nice. Um, yeah, I, I think I might wait and wash things tomorrow so that way I can like open up the resists on camera um, uh, for the recap. So that way you guys will be able to see it. But um, I was excited to try out a few different things. Um, yeah, I definitely mixed. Uh, yeah, I definitely need to do a bar gum video. That's something that is on my list. Um, well, so Darcy had a, the suggestion, um, how about putting the hot yarn, hot yarn outside to cool? One of the reasons why I don't want the yarn to cool down too fast is that um, this is something that sometimes there's some chatter about in like the indie dyer, in, like some of the other indie dyer groups, is that some different dyes have different temperatures where they might best strike. Um, and so if you let like your yarn cool off slowly, this is why sometimes leaving something in the dye pot to cool can help the rest of the color absorb because as it like, it'll pass through these lower temperatures and that can allow, help some of the other stuff bind maybe. Um, but so that's one reason why after steaming it, like while it's still hot, it's still like, that's still giving you time for stuff to bind. Um, so there is that. Um, and you guys, thanks for dealing with the scratchy, <laughs> the scratchy voice. Um, but man, I have to say, on camera, um, I, now I know that the colors from like, that I stream with aren't always true, but man, it's looking good right now. <laughs> I'm like really, really excited. Um, I need to see. Yeah, it's looking really close, <laughs> you wise. Um, oh my gosh. But I'm so glad that you guys were able to join me tonight. Um, I really, I these, these dialogues started because of something that you guys really wanted. And I'm so, so, so happy to be able to do this with you. And I'm really excited to see what your versions <coughs> of this inspiration photo will be. 
and make sure you share pictures with me. Um, there's some different ways of talk about at the beginning of the video, but in the video description. Um, use the hashtag ChemnitzDialong on Instagram or post it as a comment on the picture of that photo on the Facebook page. Um, I, well, I am, uh, I, I, it's what the, if, okay, any of you who uh, know frozen fever, I have a cold. <laughs> um, but my mood is, is good. So, yeah, the, that was my best Elsa impression. Um, what I like more of the dye that I am using now. Um, like, I mean, do would I, would I buy more of the colors? I have tons of, um, I mean, I, I love the Jacquard dyes. I have nothing against them. I just went for Dharma because of cost effectiveness. Um, and the jars are bigger and yeah, I, it felt like, you know, I made one big stock solution that used up most of the Jacquard dyes. I've now close to using up the rest of that pink. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad you guys were all able to join. Um, Dry banana heavy hat. Oh, you are watching. So funny that you're watching upstairs. Hi, Key. <laughs> um, I like the Jacquard yellow too. I've been very, very happy with this Dharma Brilliant yellow. Um, I think that this one, I should do some side by side of the two of them. I think the sun yellow might not be as bright, but maybe it is. I'm not sure how much I've used it on its own. Ooh, pink lemonade. Man, Sally, that's a good name. Ooh, ooh, I like that. Um, oh, I see. I'm, oh, I think I'm pretty well set um for now but you could always um see if someone else in the in the in the lab would want some <laughs> yes um during the live streams you can now pause it's like dvr <laughs> um yeah okay i'm gonna go check i think the timer is about to go off hide my ooh, face Yeah, this other one is much more subtle, but oof, I am really excited. Okay, I'm going to set this aside because I'm going to want to use that pan. Oh, the kitchen is a mess. Um, <coughs> yeah, Pink Lemonade, I think, is a great name. I'm like... I've really been wanting to play with yellow and have it not feel fall um, and have it, have it feel very summery. And so I am just really, really excited. And I mean, I think a sunset colorway feels summery. I've done a lot of sunset colorways. Um, <coughs> excuse me, everyone. Um, at the beginning, I talked a little bit about food coloring. Um, I really debated between using the acid dyes for this or using the Wilton Color Right system, which you guys know I love, love, love to use. Um, and because I think that for these colors, the base pink, which is just red number three, and the base yellow, which is just, I don't know, I always mix the two yellow numbers up. It's one of the yellow numbers. Um, those would achieve very, very close to the same color um, that I got here today. So if you do want to try to play around with this, those are two colors that you could do. But I was trying to see, um, oh, I guess the other day I was playing, I was using the Americolor colors. Ugh. Americolor, you have some beautiful colors. I don't like your formula. It's way too globby. Um, yeah, I'm so glad you guys were able to join. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm taking the steamer now. That's what I was doing. Okay, turning off the steam basket. 
not burning myself. Oh, we definitely have some speckles here. Um, it's definitely spread out in some places. Ooh, that's hot. Um, it's definitely spread out in some places too. Um, and it's, I guess I can set it on here. You guys see a bit. Um, I think on camera, you're not going to be able to see. There's definitely some little speckles here. There are some bigger splotches. But right now, under this artificial light, it's looking pink. It's not really looking orange, which is really exciting to me. Um, but the colors definitely, definitely did spread a bit. And so since um, some of the coverage was actually, you know what I should have done? I should have put the yarn in the steamer, gotten it hot, brought it over, and then sprinkled the the speckles because then they would have started striking. Um, that's probably what I should have done. If I, I'm like, the salt shaker is right there. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to save that and play with that on the, I have this tonal stroll that I'm going to play with tomorrow and I'll film like a little bonus video of some kind. Um, but um, this one, the yellow looks a little, does look a little deeper. Um, but I think that the tone is, I think it looks a little deeper because of all this light wash of pink that's on it. Um, I'm trying to see, yeah, the tone of the yellow looks very similar between the hand painted ones and this base so this is the color that that one started out as um so it is yes so maybe there is a tiny bit of orange in it because it made some of the yellow base a little more gold versus electric yellow um blah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think that uh, the color, like holding it up next to it, um, the color definitely has shifted. There's like a lot of pink on it. Let me try holding it up closer. Um, ooh, you got beautiful salmon. That's cool. Okay, so, and of course I'm holding up the hot yarns. So I have no idea how well um, you guys can see. But this is why, this is why I always do recaps um, for my live stream. So that way I can like zoom in and give you guys like a better resolution, better color. Um, uh, so um, Nicole, I don't recommend, um, Nicole, I don't recommend putting any personal information out on YouTube. Um, but, um, Marcy, I think you're in the Facebook group also, um, because you guys could try connecting, um, connecting there. Um, but I just, you know, the, the chat replay stick around and I wouldn't want like, yeah. Um, so that's, that's why I hit that. Um, Ooh, seen it. Okay. But yeah, so that like the, I've done, I guess, three different colorways. I thought, yes. Okay. So um, I think Nicole's also in the group. So then um, maybe, yeah, maybe you guys can connect um, in there and then like, um, and then exchange info versus ver, over PM. Um, so <laughs> yay, connections. Um, <laughs> yeah thank you guys so much for joining me today um this it was really fun to like it has been so miserable outside to play with colors that are so fresh and happy and yeah and i think that there's so many things like i did some of these colors i did were you know very literal with like this punch of pink with the yellow but there's so many ways that you could combine these together and play around with this 
and um, yeah, I I think that it is just wonderful, wonderful. Um, oh yeah, Ravelry is another another way to to connect. No, I just want to make sure that everyone is like safe. <laughs> I I don't want anyone's like information getting like I don't know, um, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I, I really appreciate all of you guys joining me today and hanging out. Um, the chat was so active. It was so fun. Um, I am really, really excited to um, see your versions of um, this, ins this inspiration photo. Um, and again, you know, if you share them um, on the public Facebook page in the thread with the picture or with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue, um, I might feature you in the recap, but if you want to share them privately, you there's a thread in the Chemist Lab Facebook group, but you can also just like post the pictures in the group. Um, that's fine. Everything in the group is private. Um, and yeah, I'm so glad that you guys were all able to tune in. Um, there's all kinds of links in the video description you should check out. But otherwise, um, oh, I might be around tomorrow. I have a couple unboxings that need to happen soon. Um, that I'm pretty excited about. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited about some of these things I have to open up. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy. So I hope that you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And yes, yeah, stay safe if you're getting snow or um, stay hydrated with the extreme heat. <laughs> Down in Australia, and I'll chat with you all soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, guys.